This company is more than happy to continue selling a flawed, defective, bad product that accelerates on its own. But they care so much about safety, they're not going to let you replace the battery, which you were able to do with all previous generations of their product. And you're telling me this is not about money. This is not about control. Bullshit. This is 110% about money. This is 110% about control, being able to control who services the product, being able to control where you buy your parts from, being able to control who you pay for service, them, and above all, being able to control what you do with the devices that you purchase. These people have no attention to detail. They don't even know the difference between spelling S-T-A-K-E and S-T-E-A-K. And you're supposed to trust these fuck faces to do battery replacements for you because nobody else can. Fuck out of here. Hey, everybody. How's it going? I hope you're having a lovely day. It's going to be very difficult for me to get to the end of this video without becoming intensely angry and aggravated, so I apologize for that. A few weeks ago, I did a video on a company that, in my opinion, is even worse than Apple. That company is Future Motion, and they make something called the One Wheel Electric Skateboard. It has one wheel, that you get on it like a skateboard, and it is a small electric vehicle. You can use it to get around town. They're really cool. Again, I personally prefer e-bikes, but to each their own. Now, this company s did something recently that is very different from what they were doing six years ago. Six years ago, if the battery died in your device, you could just replace the battery in your device and get on your way. In this new device, if you attempt to unplug the battery from the BMS to actually replace it, because the battery is a wear part, it is not like a resistor, it is not like a chipset, it is not like many other parts inside many of the devices we have, a lithium ion battery is guaranteed to be dead within a certain number of years, it will actually brick the device. You will get an error from the board if you just unplug the battery and plug it back in, even if the battery is in perfectly good condition, you will have to ship it back to their service center, which, by the way, they have one service center in the U.S. One! That's it. So you can imagine what the turnaround time is like for repairs, and you can also imagine the pricing for them, given that there is no competition. And I talked about that in this video here. Now, they made a response recently, and I wanted to read the response that the company made, and I also want to determine whether or not it is true with all of you and give some examples as to why, in my opinion, this company is considerably worse than Apple and deserves nobody's business and deserves to be reported to the FTC by every single one of its paying customers. So their response is this. Hey, Harlock, sorry this reply isn't super personal, but copying and pasting it on a few of these threads where folks are interested in why we don't suggest modifying your one-wheel batteries. By the way, notice they don't use the word repairing, they use the word modifying, even though what people are looking to do is repair their broken scooters. But just, just keep that in mind. It is fundamentally unsafe to modify the battery or battery management system of a one-wheel. We get that a small minority of one-wheel fans are agitated about this, so let's unpack it a bit. Note the Apple language, a small minority. Or when they say, you know, a small percentage of people have this problem, when in reality... Literally every single person who buys this will at one point have a dead battery. One wheels are dynamically stabilized vehicles designed for on and off-road use. Unlike a car with four wheels, there is no margin for error. People ride them in all kinds of terrain in an incredibly demanding fashion, so battery modules in the BMS must be built with the highest levels of safety and quality control to withstand a heck of a lot of abuse. We source the highest level components. We've engineered an incredibly robust battery module design and have invested heavily in advanced test fixtures for quality control of all aspects of the battery system. We also have the engineers who designed the one-wheel battery system design a battery management system from scratch to ensure the highest level of battery safety in all situations. This battery management system is designed to work specifically with the battery cells and pack incorporated in one wheel and no other cells or pack arrangements. So what's the problem with letting anyone in their garage create their own battery and plug it into the board? This is like this is not like getting an oil change, both in the level of complexity nor in the level of risk associated. The same lithium battery technology that enables high power and long range means the cells contain tremendous amount of energy potential and must be handled with utmost caution. The stakes are high. This S-T-E-A-K-S are high. First and foremost for rider safety. Boards with modified batteries are notorious for having battery issues, this according to riders. Best case, the board breaks. Worst case, the board breaks and the rider gets injured. Worst, worst case, the board lights on fire while riding or burns down someone's house. If we zoom out, it's also important to note that the light electric vehicle space is still in its early days and regulation and public perception is far from mature and established. We all want the one-wheel experience to be great for everyone and part of the future. Battery fires from modified boards could cause to be catastrophic to efforts to one-wheel acceptance. If your board needs a replacement pack, you provide that service at a repair facility using brand new OEM cells and parts. This is not a profit center for us, but a way to keep you riding and stoked in your board for years to come. Okay, so there's a, a couple of things to go over here. Firstly, if the issue is people getting bad cells, then why wouldn't you sell the battery pack itself? 
If you want people to be using your cells, then you could sell the battery pack with your cells and problem solved. I have had issues with companies that sent me cells that were bad or that were not what I ordered and I've gone over it on this YouTube channel. People who are selling cells that are bad are, again, there are companies out there like hey, Unit Pack but... Power that will tell you that you are getting 35 E cells and charge you extra for it, but then when you actually get them, you, you get something else entirely. And I discussed that in uh, this video that I did several years ago. However, when it comes to being able to replace place a BMS or anything like that. I mean, that is not something that is fundamentally dangerous. EM3V is one of the most recognized and reputable companies in the e-bike industry, and they will send you, they actually sent me free BMSs without even charging me after my battery was out of warranty. And I opened their battery in this video. Because they polyfuse their different lines of cells, even if I was an idiot and was plugging the thing in improperly, it would literally be impossible for me to cause an explosion by doing that because they polyfuse the different lines of cells so that if two wires were to be shorted because I'm bending pins on purpose, there's nothing that I could do to make that blow up. I spend a good amount of time on the e-bike discord and I spend a good amount of time on the endless sphere forums. I have yet to see a single post of somebody who got a replacement BMS for their EM3V battery ever have an issue with their battery blowing up or their device not working because they are quality batteries built by a quality company, unlike Unipack Power. This is not the issue at all. One of my favorite comments in this Reddit thread, they sound like an anti-repair lobby. They have no evidence that a customer replacing a battery in the board is the cause of any of their examples. Yet stock boards nosedive and are capable of catching fire. Not to mention ghost and show up dead on arrival with the GT. Ghosting is when the board accelerates without you asking the board to accelerate, which is obviously something you don't want an electric vehicle that can go 30 miles an hour to do. This is simply to protect their profit margin by trying to force everyone through their service center. Just like Apple, they would never do what you're talking about with or without a warranty. If it needs a part, you could get $10 on Amazon. They want you to send it to them so they can charge you 600 it's their business model. And this gentleman hits the nail on the head. But if we were to actually go into what they were saying, what they're saying is that they're concerned about your safety. So what I find many people do is they accept the premise of assholes when dealing with companies that say bullshit PR statements like this. Right? They start defending themselves saying, no, this is why it's safe. No, this is why I'm good at my job. No, this is why we should be able to do it. No. That, and that's the wrong approach to take. Going on the defensive when a company makes a false claim is the wrong approach to take. What you should do is figure out if the claim as to why they are doing what they are doing actually applies to their own products and their own philosophy on how they run their own company to figure out if they actually have the authority to be able to say that at all. What you should do is figure out whether the premise that they are giving you is even a proper premise at all. What do I mean by that? Well, they said that they care about safety in the public perception of their devices. This is not about it being a profit center, right? They care about the public perception of their devices and they care about you being safe. Well, let's see if that's true. So one of the things that I noticed about the one wheel GT, which I have not noticed about any of the electric bikes I put together myself, even the first one when I had no experience, is that they, have, they, they do something that mine doesn't. It, it, it's, you know, it's a kind of a minor issue. You know what they do? They accelerate for no reason at full speed when you're not throttling. Yeah, you may consider that to be an issue. Now, there are many documented cases of this, and I could just give you a couple of links in the description down below from my research here. This is a guy that gets off it, and oh look, it's running away at full speed while he's not on the scooter. I wonder if that'll be bad if there's, I don't know, a kid in the park that's playing and this thing just plows into him at 30 miles an hour. You have cases of individuals over here who are literally injured and on crutches because their scooter ghosted and, and and he has a brace on his left knee. He insisted on try uh, yeah, this is this is this is good good stuff over here. A great quality device that really cares about your safety. You have tons of people who are talking about ghosting in one wheel community threads around the internet that I could just go through over and over and over again. You have there's a bunch of these places where you'll find this. And what I find particularly interesting is that they have not recalled uh, this device at all, which is, again, one of the things that you expect a company would do if they cared about safety. Here, this guy posts and has almost 500 upvotes. A GT goes at top speed and nearly takes out a group of pedestrians where he recreates what happens and shows you what happens so that you have an idea of how it almost took out a group of pedestrians and you could see all the skid marks on the sidewalk over there. And it says, according to a Facebook post, the new footpad provided by Future Motion did not solve the ghosting issue with video evidence of ghosting after to replacement and my personal favorite is that when people point out that this skateboard will accelerate at full speed into people rather than recall it rather than do something about it they will delete the post that's right if you mentioned on their instagram post that the device that you pay two thousand dollars for will randomly accelerate at 20 or 30 miles an hour into groups of people what they will do is they will delete it they will delete it <laughs> they'll delete it
And uh, the comments in these threads really tell you everything that you need to know. Future Motion, can't do any repairs yourself because it will make the board unsafe and a legal liability. GT, hold my one wheel. Okay, now, this company is more than happy to continue selling a flawed, defective, bad product that accelerates on its own, but they care so much about safety, they're not going to let you replace the battery, which you were able to do with all previous generations of their product, and you're telling me this is not about money, this is not about control. Bullshit! This is 110% about money, this is 110% about control. Being able to control who services the product. Being able to control where you buy your parts from. Being able to control who you pay for service. Them. And above all, being able to control what you do with the devices that you purchase. These people have no attention to detail. They don't even know the difference between spelling S-T-A-K-E and S-T-E-A-K. And you're supposed to trust these fuck faces to do battery replacements for you because nobody else can. Fuck out of here. I've seen more complaints about this device running into people at 30 miles per hour than I have of people complaining about batteries exploding in these devices by a ratio of 10 to 1. We should not be focusing on the fact that battery replacements and repairs can be done safely and properly given that you are buying a proper set of cells. We should be focusing on the fact that every single one of these companies that talks about safety and security as a reason that you shouldn't be the owner of your personal property, that you shouldn't be allowed to service your personal property, that if somebody comes out with a way for you to service your personal property, that what they will do is they will actually sue that company and try to remove them from existence, which uh, Leonard so French discussed on his channel in this video that I suggest you watch, that they never cared about safety or security. Because if they did, what they would do is they would recall this broken, bullshit, garbage product. And the fact that they don't tells you everything you need to know. The fact that they will delete posts on their social media when you point out a factual flaw in their product that could actually hurt people tells you everything that you need to know about this garbage company and why you should never, ever, ever give them money. But above all, the fact that they are willing to double down on this after the FTC said that there is no evidence that servicing of these devices is an issue is why every single person who owns a one-wheel GT, and I do mean all of you, should go to reportfraud.ftc.gov and report them for this anti-right to repair practice. To be clear, for those who did not hear the way I described it in my original video, the anti-repair practice here is that if you unplug the battery from the BMS, it bricks the device. This is not even a question of, well, I just don't know how to do it myself. No, they go out of their way to ensure the device bricks itself when you service it. And when another company called JW Electronics decided to come out with a way to help users be able to get around this, they were sued by Future Motion. And Leonard French again discusses that here in great detail. I believe that you should be able to replace wear items on devices that you purchase that cost about $2,200. And I would say most customers would agree with me. They don't want there to be one single service center in the entire United States that gets to set how long it takes and how much it costs when you can replace a battery in your device yourself. I also believe that you should be able to choose which service center does that for you, whether it is the manufacturer or an independent. It is one thing to not sell the parts. It is another thing entirely to design the product in a way where it becomes a brick if anybody but the manufacturer services it. I strongly believe that should be reported to reportfraud.ftc.gov by everybody who owns this garbage product. There was an executive order last year put out asking the FTC to come up with rules regarding right to repair. They have been tasked with this. We have been interfacing with them on this for quite a while. And what we need is input from all of you. If every single person in the community who watches this video does something, Something, maybe something will actually get done. And if it doesn't get done, then at least we'll figure out that the FTC is toothless. But we're not going to figure that out and we're not going to make any progress unless people stand up and stop tolerating this level of bullshit. I would not buy a one-wheel GT if it was the last way of getting around on Earth because it is very clear they are willing to, to double down on disingenuous garbage when called out on it. It is very clear and evident to me that they don't give a fuck about the safety of their customers, because if they did, they would not continue to sell devices that randomly fucking accelerate to the point where their devices are less safe than an e-bike built by a MacBook repair person. Let me know what you think in the comments down below. That's it for today. And as always, I hope you learned something. I'll see you all in the next video, and I will include links down below to everything that I have cited in this video so that you could read it and do your own research for yourself. Bye now.